Step four, interpret the results. The two primary reports, the only two requested here, are a tornado graph and a spider graph. They basically tell the same story, but in slightly different ways. The purpose of each is to identify the inputs that have the greatest effect on an output. The tornado graph and the data used to create it are shown here. You can tell which input is which by the cell references. The labels, such as year one, aren't very helpful at this point. When you specify inputs more precisely in step five, you will be able to supply more meaningful labels for the reports. For example, you can see from the table that when labor hours per bookshelf decrease by 10% to value 14.4 and the other inputs stay at their base values, the projected profit increases by 37.62% to $708,911. Similarly, when this input increases by 10% to 17.6, the projected profit decreases by 37.62% to $321,362. Similar statements can be made about the other inputs. The tornado graph itself shows the inputs in decreasing order of their effect on this output, with the year one selling price in cell F10 having the largest effect. The spider graph and the data used to create it are shown here. For each input, this graph plots the percentage increase or decrease in the output as the input varies from 10% below its base value to 10% above its base value. Therefore, the steepest lines, positive or negative, are those with the greatest effect on the output. Again, the year one selling price has the greatest effect. Note that each line in this graph is indeed a straight line. This is because all relationships in this model are linear. In other models, the relationships might be nonlinear, so you might see curves in the spider graph. Now it's your turn. Examine the tornado and spider graphs together with the tables of data they are based on. Make sure you understand what they imply about the sensitivity of projected profit to these inputs.